using a, a method here uh, that deals with substitution and we do all the algebra in the substitution variable then bring it back and solve the equation but the goal here is uh, we uh, this is what we're trying to do we're trying to solve this system x plus y plus z is equal to seven all of this in the blue we're trying to solve this in the variables x y and z now it turns out the solutions are complex but you don't really need to know that to actually solve the problem now the big idea here is to create another when we see this univariate polynomial we're creating a polynomial that actually has x y and z as we are trying to find x y and z right finding it directly is hard for me this way is easier for me again we create this polynomial that has x y and z as its zeros here you see they're zeros now when again i'm leaving out quite a bit of the work but when you multiply it all the way out when you expand this out notice there would be two to the third terms right here let me just I'll go ahead and make i think that that was kind of interesting to talk about there's going to be two raised to the third power terms here right because you have a two object thing two object thing two object two cubed by counting principle there's eight eight terms here okay now to me that's kind of interesting because if you look here here's one of the terms here's another three of them that's four Here's another three of them that's seven, and you have eight terms over here. So that's kind of cool, isn't it? Combinatorics 101. Now, but notice that the sum of the zeros actually appear as the coefficient of w squared. And then I don't know, a good way to say this, the sum of the, of the product of, of all distinct pairs of zeros appears right here. And finally, the product of all the zeros appear right here. Now, what I did is I just used sigma one. Sigma one, some people call it E1. Uh, but sigma one represents the sum of the zeros right here. They, sigma one would be exactly right here. Sigma two represents the sum of the product of the distinct pairs of zeros. I think I said all that correctly, believe it or not. And then sigma three is equal to the product of all the zeros. All right. They're called ESPs, not uh, extrasensory perception, but elementary symmetric polynomials. Now notice I wrote it down here for you guys. Look, w, and you got these alternating signs because of the way the multiplications work out up here. Like minus sigma one plus sigma two and then minus sigma three is equal to zero so if we can find sigma one sigma two and sigma three and solve the polynomial we will have the zeros it's kind of cool now we already know that we have uh we already know that we have let's see here we have seven is our sigma one right uh, and sigma two is 17 given right up here right see x plus y plus z is equal to seven then this guy right here is equal to 17. So I just put them in there, isn't that nice? So you see, we already have two of the coefficients of the polynomial that we need to solve, okay? And so um, we need to figure out what sigma three is. Now y'all, the idea here is to, is to, is to pre-process in a fashion where you do all your algebra in, in, in the sigma ones and sigma twos and sigma threes in the elementary symmetric polynomials. Now notice x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed is given as 31. Well, how do we get that isolated? Well, we're gonna to have to expand this out. Okay, we're gonna to have to expand this out. And you see how we get X cubed plus Y cubed plus Z cubed by itself. We get all this other stuff, okay? Now, just want you to know, this right here took me at least an hour or more to figure out, but all of this stuff in here looks very much like what happens when you multiply Sigma one times Sigma two. Remember, Sigma one is this guy multiplied against this guy. When you do that, you get all of this. Now notice this right here would just be three sigma three, okay? This would be three sigma three, and it's kind of hard to know whether to use the substitution letter sometimes, but that would be three sigma three. All right, and so what we get here is something pretty nice. Uh, we can rewrite this. You see, we, we we all I did was algebraically isolate x cubed, y cubed, z cubed right down here. See, so I got x cubed, y cubed, z cubed, algebraically isolated and that's good because we know it's equal to 31 right and so yeah you see you just carry on here it's and again without going through all the details uh, when you expanded this out let's see where are we at here we had three z right here we had three sigma three right here but notice that we only had two uh sigma three right here this would be two sigma three located right there so that's why if you notice here See, that's just two sigma three, but we have three right here, right? So that's why we had to subtract this sigma three right here, if, you're, if that doesn't make any sense, okay? So we get that 31 is equal to everything in terms of these nice, compact, symmetric, elementary symmetric polynomials, okay? And again, I'm already talking more than I intended. 
but all of this is just the arithmetic. Okay, this is just the arithmetic. I won't talk you through that, uh, and I shouldn't. You probably had enough, but you see how nice it is. You're getting it, and all of this arithmetic just indicates that sigma three is equal to fifteen. Okay, and I, I just love this stuff. I think it's very cool. Now, so here is the polynomial we have to solve. Now, uh, so we have fifteen as our uh, constant term, which means we can uh, try the rational zero theorem. Now, I, I, again, I left out a lot of the work, but by trial and error, I finally determined that three was a divisor here, or three is actually a zero here, and it's also a divisor of 15. So three over one is, quote, the rational zero here. Now, just uh, let's see if I can manage this here. Uh, um, I'm gonna try to do, um, let's see. Uh, let me see if I can remember how to do, trying to remember how to do synthetic division. Okay, let's see, we do this. Okay, folks, so we write down, uh, let's see, uh, one right here, right, minus seven right here, uh, 17 right here. And uh, minus 15 right here. I need more room, folks. Let me see if I can pull this off. Okay, so let's do this, that's 15. So let's pull this over. And y'all, let's see, what do you do? You write the three right here. Okay. And then let's see, maybe I'll have room. Okay, so uh, you bring the one uh, in here somewhere, right? Uh, so you put the one here. Y'all, sorry, good God almighty, this is, I'm running out of room here. You put the one here, but three times one is three right here. Sorry, folks, you get minus four. I don't know if you guys can see this or not. Minus four, sorry, folks, I'm, I'm right, I, I, I did this, I just didn't leave enough room here. And so then you do three times minus four, gives you minus 12. All right, and you get five there, right? Again, my apologies if you guys can't see this. You get five there, and then you will end up getting 15 here. Uh, you know, I'm at the bottom of my screen if I'm making any sense and I can't see what I'm doing really here. And so you get zero right here. Sorry. And I hope that showed up, folks. My deepest apologies. I thought I'd, I'd create enough space, but there's some stuff popping up here or something. I can't see what I'm doing really. But you can see that's why we have a one right here. Uh, minus four and five right there, okay? All right, and then when you solve this, this is just a quadratic, I didn't do the work there, but you get uh, two plus i and two minus i, okay? You get two plus i and two minus i. And y'all, technically there's six ways you can write your answer. You know, this could, be, this could be your x variable, your y variable, your z variable. This could be your z variable, your x variable, your y variable. So there's six factorial ways to write these answers. You know, there's six, fact, or excuse me, three factorial ways to actually write the answers here. I'm just gonna leave it like this, okay? I don't feel like doing that, but there is technically, since it's symmetric, you you can, if there's any, any, this could be, for example, this could be Z if you want it. This could be X and this could be Y or, or whatever. There's, there's three factorial ways to permute these symbols. And uh, also note that if you don't believe this, you can check pretty quickly if you notice that uh, two, two plus i uh, 